next month, over 100 artists, half from Hawaii and half from over 20 countries across the globe, will converge on a small part of Kaka'ako in downtown Honolulu. This will mark the third annual Pawa Hawaii, a week-long arts festival that celebrates the creation of art, culture, and community, and to share these values with the larger community here in Hawaii and across the globe. In 2010, a high school classmate of mine, Jasper Wong, was running a small art gallery in Hong Kong and decided to do a project that highlighted the process of creating art and collaboration between artists. So he invited five of his friends to come together to paint and live and work together for a week. A few thousand miles away, I was four years into a project of my own called Utopium that I had been working on with my family that had been my parents' dream for many years to create a space that was a place that promoted creativity, that could house artists. And with a three-man construction crew, my mom, my dad, my brother, myself, and even grandma, um, built the structure that you see here today. Right around the time when the structure was becoming livable, Jasper called me and said that he had done this thing in Hong Kong and wanted to bring it to Hawaii because he felt that Hawaii was a place where the mixing of cultures is commonplace. He said that the main hurdle that he had was housing all these artists that he wanted to bring in, and that's when I knew that it was a perfect match. <laughs> we did the first powwow in February of 2011. There were four local artists, including Jasper and myself, and eight international artists. Jasper maxed out his credit card to pay for all the flights, and my family and I took care of housing all of these people. We did it in a small cafe called Fresh Cafe that's in the heart of Kaka'ako, and um, mainly because the, there was a warehouse space in the back that could house all the artists. Um, the owner, Tiffany Tanaka, was a good friend and later became an organizer of Pow Wow, and mainly because she let us use the space for free, so... That worked out. This time, though, unlike in Hong Kong, we wanted to take it a step further and really highlight the process of creating art by, at the end of the week, completely destroying all the pieces. All the artists would paint all day, and at night would stay up talking story all night, and you could really see the artists bonding together as the week progressed. And you could really see that our common love for art truly brought us together with what started from a, each artist having individual section or individual canvas to slowly traveling across the wall and slowly all the art would melt and turn and twist into each other. And it worked so well, in fact, that at the end of the week, nobody wanted to black out anything. But we decided to still black one out, so we put one up front and center and blacked it out at the end of the night. And to me, it was a beautiful moment because it really showed that this is what it was all about. It was about energy and sharing culture and making friends and not necessarily the finished piece hanging in a, in a gallery space or museum. With the success of the first powwow, we decided to turn it into an annual event in, in uh, Honolulu. And, but also wanted to continue the process of creating art in the area throughout the year. So Jasper and Tiffany turned the gallery space, uh, the warehouse into a gallery space that functioned throughout the year and had many amazing art shows there. Uh, this artist, Aaron Dela Cruz, is an artist from San Francisco. He uh, recreated his childhood, childhood room, painted his patterns across it, and even painted a car, which uh, has become pretty famous in on Oahu. Some of you may have seen it. K.R. did a uh, show there. He's an artist from New York. He waters down paint, fills old fire extinguishers with, with paint, and splatters it across buildings, and even painted a huge obelisk that we built for him that's about 25 feet high. I did a show there as well with a 20-foot hanging painting in the center of the space, and I even painted on the vol vaulted ceilings above. Powell grew in other ways as well. We, with as word spread about the event, more and more artists wanted to come. And although by then the inside of Utopium had become pretty luxurious, 
on my parents' property, there still wasn't enough room for the amount of people that wanted to come. So my parents found out that you could, fi you could buy unseaworthy boats for pretty cheap. And now, like any normal family, we have two boats in the forest of Pupukea Heights for our artists to stay in during powwow. The event grew in other ways as well. We initially did a mural uh, in the parking lot of Fresh Cafe. It was a collaborative mural, and we wanted to maybe get one or two more every year and slowly expand it to the community. But as we started to live there and work there and connect with the neighbors and talk to you know, shop owners and even connect with larger landowners like Kamehameha Schools who own most of the property, we suddenly found ourselves with tons of alleys garage doors, sides of buildings, and even a library to paint. And long story short, when we did the second powwow in February of 2012, we had over 50 artists and over 25 murals painted. This mural was done by two local artists, Prime and Estria, and a third artist named Trek Six from Miami. Uh, Prime and Estria always consult a kahu uh, or Hawaiian priest before and after they paint anything. And they wanted to depict the Hawaiian gods and goddesses. And when the kahu came back to inspect the piece afterwards, he explained to them what it meant to him and what it meant to the Hawaiian people. And immediately all the artists just started to sob and cry. And to me it was not only beautiful because the piece itself is beautiful, but because it meant that something of cultural significance does not necessarily have to be an artifact that's thousands of years old or hundreds of years old, but can be something that's created today in your backyard. This piece was done by a local artist, two British artists, a Cambodian and a Australian artist who didn't know each other very well or at all before powwow and came together because they all asked for the same wall. Now, we told, them, <laughs> we told them that they would have to talk it over amongst themselves. And after a few minutes, they decided, you know what, we're all going to work together. Piop, who is the Cambodian artist at the bottom of the photo there, he's from Cambodia and spent most of, his week, uh, most of the week painting the black and white patterns at the bottom of the screen, and, or the mural, rather. And when we asked him what he was painting, he said that he grew up most of his life in New Zealand and that his mother shared his roots and culture with him through story, and that most of the written history of Cambodia had been destroyed in war. And he said that he was painting what was called a Naga snake, which is a mythical snake that travels and fertilizes the, through the land and brings life and balance. And when he completed the piece with the two heads in the center, to me it really brought balance to the piece and completed it. It's always beautiful to, to see the growth of our paintings throughout the week, and we tell a lot of very, very nervous landowners that we do not try to control our artists in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> and that, at the very most, we'll change or black out the piece at the end of the week, and they'll get a brand new paint job out of it. Most of the time, the paintings are loved by all. Sometimes they're a little bit more controversial. This piece was done by a German artist. <laughs> just wait, just wait. A, f a French couple who now live in Montreal and paint with their 10-year-old uh, son and daughter, and a local artist named Slick who now lives in LA. Now Slick wanted to paint a statement about the history of plantations in Hawaii and painted a logo that, whose reference some of you might recognize and a pineapple having sex with a menehune. <laughs> now the piece instantly provoked dialogue <laughs> and a lot of complaints as well. And eventually we were very, very much pressured to black out the logo. Now you'd think that a rapist pineapple would be more offensive to people, <laughs> but apparently the logo was the first thing that had to go. Eventually the Characters also created some complaint, and a very, very unhappy Slick had to change the characters into a cute and cuddly Spam Musubi. 
The subjective nature of art makes it impossible for us to please everyone, but to me it's important to note that art should always provoke something, some kind of emotion, and that any reaction, whether positive or negative, is better than no reaction at all. For the most part, though, the reactions have been very positive, um, so much so that even the trolleys have rerouted from Waikiki and Almoana through Kaka'ako to show tourists our paintings. To They have even renamed them into names, Japanese names, Chinese names, all types of names. It has even allowed us to do other things like have panel discussions at the University of Hawaii where we can share with university students who are studying art and who are passionate about it. It's even allowed us to create a school that started off as a week-long project where students painted on individual squares that when put together created a large mural and this was to teach them about the power of collaboration. Now the project went so well that we turned it into a year-round school. We are now even in the process of creating a music program as well. Both of these schools are housed in our new creative space called Lana Lane. Through the help of Kamehameha Schools, we've acquired a 5,300 square foot warehouse that was abandoned, that we have built new artist studios, classrooms throughout the perimeter of the warehouse, and have even um, have tools there that artists and our students can use, like screen printing equipment, uh, dark room, and other tools. It's you know, beautiful to see the, the amount of energy and life that's being pumped into this space and also to the surrounding areas where new restaurants and, and coffee shops, other galleries have popped up. And I can't say that Pow Wow is completely responsible for all of these things. All I can say is that it's just beautiful to be part of a family and, and be part of a community that's so beautiful. As I said before, next month, over 100 artists, half from Hawaii and half from over 20 countries across the globe will converge on a small part of Kaka'ako in downtown Honolulu. This will mark the third annual Powwow Hawaii, a week-long art festival that celebrates the creation of art, culture, and community with the beliefs of and values of collaboration, creativity, and contribution. Art is the catalyst that will bring these people together. Art will help them to educate each other, to share each other's cultures, and to share these values and this beauty with the larger community here in Hawaii and across the globe. Art is the catalyst that has brought me so many friends, that has brought me love, has brought me a big family. Art is my catalyst, and I invite you to find yours.